Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. In today's segment, what I want to talk about is this road that we're on in regards to gender and its impact that it's having on our society and the inevitable destination is utter confusion and chaos. It's not prosperity. And it, it almost seems as like we're all a part of this psychiatric experiment to see what people are going to do. That, that's what it feels like to me. Like if they keep repeating something over and over and over, will, will the human mind begin to just accept it as normal? Or will, they, will the human mind push back? And if they are going to accept it, how many times do they have to repeat it and for how long? Like, I feel like we're just a part of a huge experiment. Especially when I see something like this. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Melanie Fontes Rayner, counselor to Secretary Javier Becerra. Thank you so much for joining us for our conversation to celebrate Women's History Month. So this is supposed to be about women and the uplifting of women and women's accomplishments. And on this panel, with, with all of these other women, you have a man sitting there. And it's a man that is being heralded as a woman doing great things in our society. <laughs> I, it's, to say it out loud to me sounds absolutely absurd. That this person is up there sitting there with other women and and is a man. And then the fact that this person is in charge of like health and human services when they're clearly suffering from gender identity disorder. They're clearly suffering from a mental illness. But that aside, you're, you're, you're up there with other women and just the level of narcissism, you care more about your life and your happiness and what you think the world should be that you're completely pissing on every woman that's up there on that panel and all of their accomplishments because you're not in fact a woman. But all these people are buying into it or pretending to. I said, social experiment. Today, we are celebrating women across the country, women at the Department of Health and Human Services who are the backbone of this department. In America, women are just 50% of the total workforce. But here at HHS, 70% of our operating divisions are led by women. To say that HHS is positioned to proactively advocate for the health. While you're listening to her, I want you to keep in mind that there's a man there. Everything that she's saying, keep in mind that there's a man there. Obviously she's reading from a script. Now whether she believes it or she's pretending, she is still involved, she's still complicit. She's so involved in this theater. And please tell me how this is going to benefit our society moving forward. How does this benefit women? How does this benefit men? How does this not confuse everyone? How does this not just add chaos to absolutely everything that we know to be true? And while being a woman in this country is akin to saying that President Biden won the election. In a few moments, you will get to hear from some of the leaders here at HHS who work daily to run our nation's federal health and human services programs. Deputy Secretary Andrea Palm. Hi, Melanie, thanks for having me. Admiral and Assistant Secretary for Health, Dr. Rachel Levine. Thanks, Melanie, it's a pleasure to be here. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Administrator, Chiquita brooks Lashore. It's a great to join you. Assistant Secretary for Global Affairs, Lois Pace. Thanks for having me, Melanie and Health Resources and Services Administrator, Carol Johnson. Great to be here, Melanie. Each of these talented and accomplished individuals play an important role in ensuring that the programs and initiatives. So you're looking at one, two, three, four, five women 
and one man. That's what you're looking at. And this is supposed to be Women's History Month. And you can look at the, the banner in the back, a conversation with HHS women leaders to celebrate, women leaders, but that's a man. It's so absurd, it makes my skin crawl. Have you all lost your minds? Have you all absolutely lost your minds? Are you, are you, are you succumbing to this scientific experiment, this psychological experiment to twist and pervert everything that we know to be objectively true? Every woman up there is being mocked by this man sitting there. He's, he's dressing up like a woman, presenting himself like a woman. He's crossing his legs like a woman because there's two genders and he knows the characteristics of the opposite gender from him. And so he's, he's able to step into that gender like a suit. Well, if you can step into it like a suit, it devalues that gender. It makes a mockery of it. And he can't contribute, he can't contribute to our society the way women are born to contribute. He can't, it's an impossibility. Same thing, a woman can't just dress as a man, get some hormones, get a beard, and think that they're gonna contribute to our society the way a man would contribute to our society. That's just an impossibility. It's just impossible. That's why I say transgender is not even a real word because you cannot transition from one gender to another. It's not real. Just like hate speech isn't real and, and hate crimes aren't real. They're not real. You can't transition. So transgender doesn't make any sense. You can't actually do it. Let's look at the article. This is coming from The Blaze. USA Today includes Admiral Rachel Levine, who is transgender among Women of the Year honorees. Of course, USA Today does it. They're activists, they're not journalists at all. Admiral Rachel Levine has been named among USA Today's Women of the Year, a distinction that flies in the face of biological reality because Levine is actually a man. Rachel Levine is one of USA Today's Women of the Year, a recognition of women across the country who have made a significant impact now, obviously, the blaze is, is going to tell the truth. Blaze isn't left-leaning, but USA Today is. But, you know, of course, USA Today will villainize the blaze, say that they're far right and they're extremist and they're homophobic and transphobic and all of these things simply because they're telling the objective truth. So the people who are, who are mentally disturbed, who are mentally diseased, they're the ones who are taking over the asylum. They're the ones who are making the rules. And if you, if you ask a question, if you try to bring up actual science, then you're somehow now hateful and you're discriminatory and you're marginalizing. No, I'm not marginalizing, I'm not hateful. I'm not afraid of any of these people at all. I'm not afraid of anything. So they don't even understand what phobia actually means. They live in this subjective world because it allows them to justify their chaos and their confusion and their mental disease. Because in an objective world, what they need is help, compassionate, patient help. But you cannot have a man be woman of the year. You, just me saying it should let you know why. You can't have a man be woman of the year. And me bringing that to your attention does not make me any kind of phobic. I'm not marginalizing anyone. I'm not calling for any type of violence on anyone. I'm merely stating the fact. You can't have a man be woman of the year. A press release last year heralded Levine as the first openly transgender four-star officer across any of the eight uniformed services of the United States and the first ever female four-star admiral. So now this man is gonna take is, is, is going to take that, that title as being the first female. <laughs> that doesn't bother you women out there like at all. Feminists, where are you guys at? That a man is, is just taking, oh, just taking over. I, 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 like I said, science, it's this is a psychological experiment to, to see if, if 
if see how far you can push the limits if you can just speak something into existence as 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 Ripa says just trying to speak it into existence we know that it that it's subjective but if we keep repeating it and we get enough people behind it we get enough high profile people behind it and we put in enough movies and enough tv shows and enough commercials we can make it to where it's normal it will always be the exception to the rule it will never be normal it will always be the exception that's just the way that works that's just the honest truth you understand we can't have it be normal normal would mean that it happens more than anything else that's what makes something normal like we have men and women coming together because only a man and a woman can come together to actually make a baby and procreate that is the rule that's what's normal that's not to say you can't have same-sex couples come together and adopt and raise a child but that, those are going to be the exceptions not the rule saying that out loud does not mean that i'm against that that is just the biological imperative two people the same sex can't procreate that won't further our civilization we'll die out you understand that so that's what i'm talking about let's just have honest conversations about what is the rule and what is the exception and why is the exception and why it's the rule you can't normalize the exception and think that you're doing it for the prosperity of of our civilization because there's a reason why something is the rule it which is my point but this right here is absolutely ridiculous you can't have a man i'm gonna keep saying it over and over and over until it just gets in let it sink in you can't have a man be woman of the year Transgenderism continues to represent a topic of intense cultural contention, particularly on the issue of whether biological men who identify as women should be allowed to play women's sports. No. Women play women, girls play girls, boys play boys, men play men. It's end. There's no need to have a discussion. There's no need to have a discussion. There's not an argument or anything. Men compete against men. Women compete against women. And then like everybody can now go out to lunch. I've just saved you all, all kinds of time and deliberation. So as I said before, it seems like one big experiment and it's not an experiment that is going to yield a result that's going to help the prosperity of our civilization. Someone who believes that they were born, born into the wrong body, they're mentally diseased and they require help. Now, we're also in the land of the free. If you're an adult and you don't want that help, and you want to surgically alter yourself and pharmaceutically alter yourself and you want to dress as the opposite sex from 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 how you were born have at it right as long as it doesn't infringe on my inalienable rights do your thing i got no problem with you it's when you want the world to buy into your delusion when you want the world to pretend along with you and participate that I have an issue. I'm not talking about you have a friend who's transgender and they know, they're aware, because I think that most transgender people are like this. They're aware that, hey, my lifestyle isn't the norm, but this is what makes me feel the best. But they're not trying to force you or force anyone, impose their will on anybody and try to make you call them a woman and all this kind of stuff. They're cool. You, you, you do your thing. But I think there's a small minority of, of folks who it's more about the control and about the power and less about them feeling good in their own skin, so to speak. And it's those people you can tell because they're, they're, they use aggression and force on other people and that makes them the bad person. That makes them the bad person, it does. But you can't force the world to adjust and shift to you. That level of narcissism is, is, going, is going to stunt you and your community and the community that's around you. you. You really think that if I see a transgender person in a room, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a, a point, like walk across the room and say, you know, let's say it's, it's, it's a, a man and he's dressed as a woman, you, you, you know you're really a man, right? You think I'm gonna do that? Because that's the implication. If I say the truth, you make me out to be that person. That doesn't make me transphobic. That would make me, that would make me a very insensitive person. I was going to say another word, but I try to keep my stuff clean. <laughs> so of course I wouldn't do that at all. I, I've been around transgender. I don't care. It's when you want to teach my children that transgenderism is normal. It's when you want to be in the same bathroom as my daughter. It's when you want me to lose my job if I don't 
say the proper pronouns or you want me to, to be fined or convicted of a crime. It's all of those things. Like, how dare you? How dare you attack the community because it, it, it's not the way you want it? Who are you? You know, you talk about inclusion, but when you act that way, what you're saying is that I don't want to be, I don't want to be included. I want to be special. And that's not, as I said, that's not coming from, from everyone in the transgender community. I think it's a minority. It's always that, that, bad, that one bad apple or that community of bad apples in, in, a, in a huge orchard. Because I don't believe that most transgender people care about all this stuff. I think they just want to live their lives to the best of their ability and pursue happiness like the rest of us. And they're human beings and they're Americans. And so they're afforded the same rights and protections under the Constitution, period. But just like I can't impose my will onto any other adult citizen, they cannot impose their will onto me. That's the problem I have. And you cannot teach this to children. You can't teach them about these things. I don't teach my children, they're eight and 11, about heterosexual sexual situations. But when the time comes, I'll handle that. My wife and I will speak to them. I don't want it taught in schools. It doesn't need to be taught in schools. Sex education, sex of any kind doesn't need to be in schools at all all period that will happen in the home you teach them science and you teach them mathematics and reading and comprehension and grammar and all of those things let me take care of the values i'll take care of the values my wife and i within our home anyway you can't have a man be woman of the year period like and subscribe if you agree like and subscribe you can't have a man be woman of the year